Welcome to the fourth part of uh, our series about ASP.NET MVC identity over REST. Uh, in the last part, we just generated the UI layer and we did a, a job by extracting all the stuff we need into the logic UI layer uh, for this web app. Especially the service user store was very important. As you see here, he's not implemented yet. And today's task will be, first of all, to implement a REST facade here. And the second step will be to uh, connect the REST facade with our service user store. So let's start off with the REST facade. To do this, I first of all generate a new pro um, solution folder called services, like I do every time in my pattern. And now I add a new project. Um, .NET Framework 4.6.1 from the web uh, part and I go there to the ASP.NET web application. I just generate a file system folder, services, and then I say, hey, go to UI, uh, no, services, let's say API. That's our API project. Okay, I generate it and I use Azure API app um, to clear things out. Azure API app brings us a very, very neat uh, and simple project template without all this uh, visual stuff, but already Swagger in form of Swashbuckle um, implemented in it. And um, you can deploy the Azure API app without any problems to a local IS. There's no problem. Um, it's just Azure in this naming is a little bit confusing. So I just add this project. And we have to now wire things a little up. First of all, what we do all the time is we just say we have a default namespace here. We need it. Let's go here and let's do it very clean. So it's um, the right way. We don't need models. We don't need app data, but we need to do some stuff with the namespaces now. Here we need the correct namespace and here we need it and we need it in the global ASX, of course. So um, I don't know exactly edit open with the global ASX is a problem all the time, as you see here. Yes, we did it. Um, and this is kind of weird web API application. Why is this? Uh, ah, yeah, that's the application. Yeah, correct. Inherits from. So now that is correct. And now we have to do some stuff in order to bring our service API. Let's make it the start project in order to bring it to work. So why is that? First of all, um, we had this test projects here and in the app config, we had already all the stuff for uh, implementing connection strings because what we need is um, we need our API to communicate against the database. And that's why our API at least needs um, access to the database directly, which includes entity framework and stuff like that, which is not uh, here. We have to bring it into our project first. Let's do it. And as you can see, there are outdated um, NuGet packages already inside of this, uh, of this project because the template is a little bit outdated. So let's go there and say, update package for the project services API. So let him do the job. Just wait a second here. Okay, he's done. Now I copy the connection string section over to the web config of the service. So let us just get rid of this. I hate it stuff and here are the app settings and let's add the entities to this one and 
for sure we need to add a reference at least to data.core to logic.core and to logic.share to this project because this project will need all those references later on okay that's fine what we know too if we take a look at our test console is that um, first of all we need to init the logic um, using let's go there um, autofag and automapper so first of all this project needs um, a reference to autofag okay let's install it and now there's a very very important point because autofag has uh, another package uh, built in which is called autofag.webapi2 and we need this package now too and I'll explain why so let's go there and just implement it just a second okay it's installed and now why is it so this is something we want to call later on and now <clears throat> what we want to achieve is in our app start here in the web api config we want to do two things first of all we want to tell him that he should do the startup util dot uh, init logic stuff which means he should configure autofact but the problem here is um, if we take a look at the http configuration um, there is already something called dependency resolver that means that web api http configuration has already some sort of dependency resolving logic inside but what we have to tell him now is that he should use our dependency resolver which in fact is autofag and there is um, something inside this package autofag web api 2 which looks this way and uh, what we need now is the dependency container uh, which is nothing more than the startup util dot container now this is we are saying hey init the logic and now please uh, dependency resolver um, in http configuration be out of fact please so that's what we are telling him here but there's a problem the problem is that the dependency resolving which is built in into http configuration is already able to resolve um, all the controllers for us so when we say we want this controller blah 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 um, the dependency resolving of asp.net already knows uh, what to do when somebody wants a container so when we do this stuff and go hit ok it shouldn't work because let's go over to swagger because when we say try it out oh it's working actually but i know there are a lot of problems inside of this because we just told him um hey we want to use our own dependency injection and now um it's it's just simple uh, random if this uh, works or not this is not clean here so what we have to tell him that he should use autofag to resolve the api controllers too so he should do the same stuff to do so uh, what we have to um, do in the init logic what we should have to do is we should bring here some point uh, that he's able to implement the um, uh, the other stuff this uh, registering api controllers before he builds the container ready so that is a problem we can get rid of this problem if we use an event here so let's go and uh, try to implement this event and you will see for what is good so our startup util here um, should expose an event so to expose an event we should uh, first of all create if we want to make it clear uh, some uh, sort of event arguments so let's go there in logic core and uh, make a new uh, folder which is called event arguments so add 
class and that should be an container builder event args which is a naming convention for event arguments in .NET. So that should be a public class which is of type event args and uh, this one should bring up a property which should be a container builder which comes from autofac with a private setter because you want a mutable class and now we should build it this way so this is an event argument which uh, ca which can pass a container builder to uh, the listener to the event listener so let's go to the startup util itself and now just say you know what let me just bring it in dear startup util you should be able to throw this event of type event args no what is called uh, container builder event args container builder event args so this will be called and uh, the the event name is auto effect builder ready and now just um, uh, let's implement it just right because uh, before we assign the container let's say we just bring up the event and it is a new let's make it container builder event args builder so now at this point we give any interested listener the ability to do something with the builder just before we build so how can we use this now we could go here and say before we call the init logic let's go there startup util dot please subscribe to this event with a lambda with an anonymous method and let's say now that we want to do this one e just a second dot register oh no e dot just a second container builder register api controllers with this stuff so this extension method comes from the web api stuff from autofec and it's telling him hey please uh, when you get this container builder tell him that he is responsible um, to register the api controllers too inside the current executing assembly which is our services api project so if we do this now autofec is our complete um, resolver for dependencies so when we just hit here f5 and go to swagger i hope it's working still what he's doing here is it's still working but this instance of the controller of this values controller now comes from autofec okay cool just to get rid of our innerving slash swagger let's go here into the project properties and tell him to every time open up swagger when we hit a five here so now um, at this point everything is um, pretty well set up for the moment and um, now we uh, should take care of our logic because we need inside this controller we need the ability to just go against our database so let's do this okay for doing this we just add let's add a new controller no that's a new class it's better trust me <laughs> and now say this should be our user controller class so public class user controller and just say you are an api controller and now let's do something go to the constructor and tell him you need an i what was it called by the way an i user repository 
uh, user repository. And let's tell him that he has a I user repository, user repository. And let's tell him that the user repository should be the user repository. Okay, that's just a constructor. Let's give him some nice stuff, root prefix, just to ensure that it never will um, go out of this prefix. That's uh, every time a good idea, as we will see. And now let's just say a public uh, async task of, yes, HTTP uh, response message and say get. And now use try. And this is our result is user repository. And now we get get users async. That's a good thing. Wait. And we will say request dot create response of result. Uh, and first of all, HTTP status code. Okay. And result and here we should tell him create error response HTTP let's say internal server error uh, could not retrieve users let's say this one and here we could say um, hey if um, let's do it a little bit better uh, if result any mm, we could say create response not found and here okay with the result so await get users async is enumerable and he's saying hey that might be uh, possible multiple enumeration. Yeah, that's okay. Let's tell him first of all this and try this out. Okay, go there. Just wait a second to come this up. Here's our user controller, our get method, try it out. And it's saying could not retrieve users. Let's see what ha what's happening there. I don't know what may be wrong here. Try it out, and it is uh, fail to entity exception. What is the pain point here? E login failed for user, which means something is uh, wrong with my uh, connection there. Just a second. Uh, that should be because I just left out the password. Yeah, that's true. Let me do this just a second. Okay, I just put in the password into the config and now let's see what happens now. We go here, and we go to the users and say try it out. And now we get the response from our uh, database and it's all a user transport model if you remember. It's not uh, the application user, but it's just um, the uh, model for um, our transporting user data between layers. So that's fine. Let's go there and implement an another one which should be very uh, convenient for us using the ID. Uh, and we could say go into the repository get user by ID as link and we're passing in the ID if uh, result equals null then not found uh, and if it's uh, okay then just find it could not retrieve user would be a better message here so let's call this x and x by the way we don't need this one because we don't use the x okay so now we have um, our repository here our service which is using um, the repository very well um, so that uh, we can get rid of the values controller now 
and <clears throat> later on I will just you know make this thing a little bit nicer so that Swagger config um, uh, configuration will use the commands and stuff like that. You will find it in the in the sh in the source code, but that doesn't matter at this point. Okay, um, now that we have this in place, what we have to do now is we have to go inside our logic UI and just think about how can we just use this in terms of uh, we just want to use our uh, service user store for retrieving or for connecting to this. Because our logic UI is called from our web UI, we need something here inside our web config, an app setting should be, uh, which is something like add key, which is called services base URL. And the value should be, just for the purposes of testing it, if we take a look at the properties of services API, it is this HTTP URL followed by API slash. So that is our base URL for doing all this stuff. Okay, next thing what we need is, we need uh, inside our login user store something which is able to communicate against a REST API now. So <clears throat> what could that be? Uh, there is a very, very well-known NuGet package, which is REST Sharp. REST Sharp is just simply a package containing some stuff which is very valuable for communicating against a REST facade. It brings in all the stuff you need um, for, um, you know, converting the types. It brings in newtons of JSON and stuff like that. And it's just very simple to use. So what we need here, first of all, is a client. So what we, can, what we could do is we could implement something like private REST client client. And we could say return new uh, REST client. This is the one from REST Sharp. And he says, hey, have you something like configuration manager, which is inside of system configuration, dot app settings, and then our key was services base URL. So that should be our REST client. So now uh, we are saying, hey, every time you want to communicate with a REST facade, let's make it the new one. Uh, here you have under the client property, you have something you can use. So now let's just uh, take a look what um, here is uh, needed. And as you can see here, here are find methods, which we already can um, you know, map. Find by ID async is such an example. And let's say we want to say that is equals to await. For using await, we need async here on this. Await client dot. And now we can say execute as get. And now we need the task key version of this. Execute get task async. And it should be a user transport model from the result. And now we say, so what is to be done here? Um, what he wants us to provide here is a request and stuff like that, and blah, blah, blah. And what I prepared um, is, let's implement it here. I have this um, uh, little method and let's say, the relative URL is bum bum bum. Is user because this is our uh, path to the user controller, and we just add if somebody uh, brings in a relative URL, we add it. Let's say you could do this optional. And then we just make the request. We prepare the request with the given method, defaults to get. And then we get the response in an async way. Um, execute get task async. That is, that is um, not so good. 
let's use uh, execute uh, execute task async execute task async t result with the request so now the request says hey that is a get request or whatever and now we get the response and if everything is okay he re returns the data inside the response all this stuff the data here inside that is a t result which comes from here that it's done by the rest client inside of it so now we can say is this one is await retrieve result async of type user transport model and it's uh, just going against the user and making a get and now we should be able to say this would be the get method with user transport model complete uh, now let's extend um, i enumerable parameter which comes from rest sharp parameters equals null and let's say now if parameters not if parameters any if it's null then it should be considered false request parameters equals to parameters punct to and we should take it as a list already. So now, or let's do it at range. Now we can go back to innumerables. Sorry for confusion. It's just a helper method. Uh, parameters any, then do it. And now we can go here to the user transport model and saying now. Uh, get and here uh, new mm -hmm. and let's say user ID is this working I don't know new long oh no by the way we don't need parameter here. We can just simply say user ID dot to string. You will see why just in a second. And now this one should uh, get a um, user transport model, which is not sufficient currently, um, because we have to um, if result equals null, then we should just make it simple first return null and now we should say new uh, application user which is our application user and let's map him by hand id is result.id uh, username is result.username and uh, claims let's say mail is result.email and password hash is result dot password hash so and now we should be able to do this this is this has to be replaced later on but i just wanted to show you if we can you know use find by the async to connect to our services so this would be later on excluded okay let's go here and let's see what he uses Oh no, just a second. This was stupid. Let's go and set this as a startup project now, the UI web, because the UI web is already configured to use the service user store. And now just hit here. Okay. And let's say we want to go to login and say we have a test at test.de and with some password and what happens now is find by name async we haven't implemented find by name async yet so let's do this now it should be not so complicated let's do this so find by id was done now we need to find by name so to implement find by name we have to first of all go to the services and say 
we need a get method, another one, which is coming with, uh, let's call it get string username, which is from the .NET perspective with this, okay. So now our repository has get user by username async with username. We already prepared this the right way. And we just do the same thing as we did here. Okay, let's do this. But if we just test out our API now, we should see that there's an error because now we have two get methods taking parameters id and username and he is swagger is not able to determine what, what's going on here so what we have to do is we have to tell him this has another route get by username let's test this out and now our swagger should be fine get First of all, the normal get, and if we take the username out of it, test user, and go here and enter it, he should be able to find the test user. Now it's fine. You see, get by username. So that was okay. Um, let's just know, let's go over here, and now we have to say for find by name he should be use um, get by username it is a get method and now we have to put in a new list of parameter which should contain one new parameter with the name username i think and the value username that should be a new list of parameter which goes there which goes there there's something wrong still just a second yeah that should be better now username and let's see how this works um, Let's set it as a start project and then let's say what happens if we try to log in as a test user, which, uh, okay, it should be a mail address login. And now he is already at sign-in manager and why is that let's go here and let's do it again because he already got a result and this result is null and it's not null it is something here very invalid we did a mistake the retrieve async is just generating us a default let's say see what the ha what the error is there let's go to the retrieve async and let's say go over here and go over there so what's wrong here test at testde blah 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 login and now what he got some data here that's a problem that means he just got something and uh, that's not a good um, point maybe because we made a mistake and this mistake was that we should generate an error response here or that we should say create response null i don't know exactly if we should do this um, Maybe we should just say make it this way without the not found stuff. Just a second. Let's try it again. 
because we don't want to generate him uh, just automatically some sort of user. Let's go there, log in, and now let's see what happens. And data is still in default um, response. Let me check this. Okay, now I got it. The point was that I had to add this parameter query string here on the top so uh, that he's able to put this parameter username inside of the URL. So let's go and try it out. Just hit two of them as startup projects now. And let's log in and let's say test at testde with something like this. And now we get invalid login attempt. So what happened in the main fact is we just used the service user store, which is set up inside of ASP.NET Identity to find a user by its name. There's a username. And um, what we told him is to just call the API with our mapping method here, the get by username for this for the sake of this, we just generated a controller method for this in the first place here. So we are now able to communicate against our API. That was the purpose of all this stuff. Now, all the stuff here on the bottom is still very, very ugly. So we always have to do is, uh, to make this happen. We should, first of all, um, go in Logic UI and tell him that he's able to um, configure um, AutoMapper. First of all, we need aut AutoMapper here. There is no AutoMapper inside of Logic UI. Do this. Bring in AutoMapper. Okay, let's do it. That's it. Then if Logic UI uses AutoMapper, then the UI web app should configure AutoMapper for the client side, um, uh, not for the client, for the front end side. It's not here either. So we just use AutoMapper on both sides. Let's install it here too. Okay, there it is. And now in the configuration in the in the app start here um, let's say in the global asx let's say mapper initialize let's say that this guy should be able to map between application user and user transport model and vice versa so that should be done here and now we should go into the user store and say return mapper dot map t source this one would be um, our result with this, which is a user transport model and we say user transport model to application user result let's say let's see what we'll do so so now we <coughs> just use auto mapper on our service user store to get something uh, because we have this one from the service and we want this one to uh, to the ui to the identity stuff okay find by name async and we should do the same stuff here too so now um, we know that this should be mapped automatically because um, the properties and application user should be very um, the same name as they are in user transport model. Um, now we have to check something out for making the test a little bit more better because as you've seen currently there is um, um, uh, something set up in the view model for the login that tells him that the username here should be let's make it in english username password and uh, stay logged in 
or something like this. So and now username as the email address stuff on it. Let's get rid of it because in our model the username can be something different than the email address. Uh, so now let's make this a startup project again and let's go to our service user store to take a look under the hood. Where is it? Find by name async. So let's go here and let's see what happens. No, he forgot the swagger. No, he, do he doesn't forgot. I'm stupid, that's it. So let's go here and say test user with blah, blah, blah. And now let's take a look what happens. What is the result of this? Continue. The result is the correct user with the ID one and the password hash. Mm -hmm. And now we should get out of it. Where is my locals window or my autos window? It should say user ID is one. Now find by user is called automatically. Let's see here result. Yeah, the result is coming and he's mapping it again. map and now he's uh, trying to see if get lockout enabled async and this frozen an exception now we fail so but the main point here is it's working it's not implemented correctly so uh, we could say here something like return task from results in this case uh, user lockout enabled because that's what he wants to know. And now we can go on and wait for the next exception. Let's do it. Let's bring it now to the finishing uh, test user with some invalid password. And now the next pain point, let's go over and wait for the next exception. It's in sign min, um, in sign in manager in password sign in async and he says that our user store doesn't implement the i user password store so that is the next one to do so let's do it so our user store is not able to check passwords that's what he he's telling us so what we need is an i user password store of application user application user and long and in order to get it, we have to implement three methods. And those are the three methods. And now we have to deal with those methods. So first of all, let's try to see where, where it crashes right now. So let's go there. Log in again. Test user some stupid stuff. Now he crashes here. He wants to retrieve the password hash. Okay, simple enough. Now let's say return task from result user dot password hash. That's it. Nothing more. Very straightforward. So go here. And now let's try to see what happens. Invalid password. So here he says, hey, there's something uh, in the format very, very invalid. Um, uh, let's check this one out. It's uh, just simply saying that this hash is very invalid. What What's going on here? And um, you're not supposed to uh, use this hash. OK, let's go in there and get rid of this stuff. It's simply because our user, which we created in the first place, he's still um, uh, he's, he's not created in the right way because he has an invalid hash and stuff like that. So just go there and let's try another thing. Let's try to create a new user. So what is um, has to be done there? So let's try the register stuff. 
So now here again is an email address and stuff like that. Let's uh, let me just you know uh, correct this form because this is not the, the the correct one currently. So I've corrected it and now let's say test user two test and testy. Let's say register. That's the rule. So now he comes here and say, says, hey, there, this is a password hash and now you have not implemented this method. Now, step by step. Okay, let's say, okay, user dot password hash is password hash. As you've seen, there is already, um, let's say this one. Um, there is already a method which um, somehow generates password hashes. That's already built in. All we have to do is in our store to tell him how do we store this password hash. And here is nothing in in this method, there's nothing to update the user, in fact. So we have to go on here and uh, go through this stuff step by step. Okay, register again. Test user 2. So now we have not implemented I use a email store because this comes now uh, because um, our user store or user manager says hey I am able to send emails but the user email store is not able to store all the stuff and to generate uh, the user create async as you can see here um, there is nothing implemented like this so um, to short things up let me just uh, bring in all the methods that are needed here to bring this to life. You can check it out in the source code. So now I <clears throat> um, regenerate everything a little bit. So our service user store here now has all the interfaces which are possible, possibly needed. And another thing is that I just refactored it a little bit so that now there here is an API client which just uh, wraps now around this REST client called which, which we had. So now you see it here and here are methods like create user async, delete user async, get use, uh, user role names async, stuff like that. And I uh, correspondingly created some more methods in my um, API. Here is a get method, which you know, then we have get user by name. Here is one which says, hey, give me the user ID. I will give you the role names, which the user is member of. And then I have another one, a post method, so um, that we can create new users and stuff like that. So to just uh, start off, um, I will create or delete all those uh, current data in the database. Let's say delete from, let's start by an empty database. So that's it. And now I start the API here and the web, both startup projects. And let's take a look how this works now. So let's first take a look at the API. Here's the API and those are the methods. Now we have a post method and stuff like that. And now let's just register a new user. Test user. And then we have this email. Mm, one password. And now try to register this user. So as you can see, this one is working. Now I take a look at the user table. Just a second. Here you can see this. The user table is populated. Here is one error uh, inside, or not error, but logical bug. Um, currently, we uh, in the first part we just set up the username to always equal the mail address. We can get rid of this uh, later on. 
Now, a few things are very important. Um, there's a password hash, never the password. The email is confirmed already, although we didn't send out an email. It's just because, uh, when you not remember, I'll uh, show it to you. Inside of our repository, which is the user repository, there's a method at user async. And here is um, the initial state defined. And the main important thing is we set the email confirmation um, at, at an instant to true so that we don't need the email. Normally you would get the send the email out here, set it to false and then come back with a deep URL into a web page which changes this email confirmed to true. Um, another important thing is this one. So um, we will see it in a minute. If this isn't correctly set, your complete API wouldn't work. I show you why. And another thing is the membership of the roles. So this is already set. So when we take a look at user roles, you will see this user is member of one role. So that our API, let's go there, should say, first of all, let, let us get all current users. We have one user with the ID 5. So that means we can here pass in the 5 and try it out and it will give us the role names, which will be very important in a minute. So now that this is done, we have to ensure that logging in and stuff like that is working properly. Here's the login. Now we have to use this username because we defined it that way. Our API just forgets the test user. Mm. We could fix it up easy. Hit the password. Okay, that's okay. Let's log off again. Log in again. And let's check check if it's really checking the password. Yeah, it does. So when I provide the correct one, it works again. Okay. So this means our API now uh, works. What happens? Let us assume, for instance, when I uh, make a little bug, let's say I'm doing the following one. Let's let me go to the API and let me mess up something with my URL. What's now? Problem with the approach we choose is debugging is not especially simpler, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so when we try to log in now and we say that's our username and password, we should get a strange bug. So this is this one. This line which he's complaining about, this line is inside of our application user. I'll show you. This should be logic UI models application user. And this is the line he's complaining about. So what happens here is he gets an application user and tries to get a claims identity out of it. So a claims identity is an, uh, something which is um, valid by some one or more claims uh, from ASP.NET and is the real identity, not the user, but the identity which is um, logged in into the open context. So he's not able to retrieve the claim identity, but the error message is not that good. Uh, let us take a look again at the error message. Um, here's just something like now. So the problem here was that I changed here the API of my how is a user role name retrieved. So that means that our logic um, cannot retrieve those usernames, so uh, the, the group names. This list is not available. If this list is not available, the complete claims identity will not work properly. Um, the same is true. Let me just show you another very common scenario where this fails. Let me correct this one. And now let me do something in the database. A lot of people are struggling with that. Let me go into my user table 
Uh, and let me just delete the security stamp. So that is now, that's not sufficient. Let me set update user data user set security stamp. Now, is this working? I hate him. Sometimes. Okay, so now security stamp is uh, null. And now let's try to check if our login works. No. So let's go over to Management Studio. And now I will insert a valid security stamp, which is nothing more than just a GUID, something, a string. Now let's just simply refresh the page. And it's working. So what I wanted you to show is that although we have now a wrapper um, using our application user, our own user store, doesn't mean that it's uh, just simple or something like that. It is very hard because um, ASP.NET Identity has a lot of, you know, stuff uh, behind. Um, and, uh, but now we um, have everything what we wanted. Let us take a look. Here in the UI, in the web UI, there's no connection string whatsoever. And here is no entity framework. Uh, here is entity framework. In fact, let us try to get rid of it. Uh, is this possible? I don't know exactly. Is this using Entity Framework still? Mm, let us take a look because, yeah, it needs Entity Framework actually because it uses this types here, application user and stuff like that. And they are, they need Entity Framework, but still we can try to get rid of them. What happens then? Let us check this. Let us say everything which is something with entity framework, which is this one, first of all, and then this one. So now what happens when this one is built? Yeah, identity user itself is not available here. So that's the point. Um, so we have to keep um, entity framework. This is identity entity. This one must be in place, but it's just for for the sake of um, keeping track of this dependency, which is there. Uh, not because the UI has direct access to the database. That's not there and we can prove it because the UI has no connection string to the database. Um, as I told you in the last part, if you don't want to use this technique, just a second, is it installed? Nobody knows. I will see just a second. So um, this, this guy is using this DLL and this DLL is simply using this stuff and you can just fill in the not implemented exception. I will do a little bit of that in the last part of the series where we wrap up everything once again, what we did. But at the current stage, what we can say now is that this project is uh, clean. Uh, we haven't ensured that the, our API is not called by any you know, um, bad people, but that's detailed stuff. That has nothing to do with uh, our our thing. Yeah, except now we got it um, finally, and now he's fine with installing it. I think yes, yeah, everything is fine. And now we can uh, do what we wanted: authenticate against a web page, but using no direct mapping between it, using a mapping against the REST call. Plus, what we achieved also is that we use a custom entity model here in data.core. 
I know it's a little bit confusing. I hope I could uh, still give you some hints how to achieve um, this and go forward and check out the code on GitHub uh, and don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks.